Hi, welcome to the Mike Page Doodle Club. I'm Mike Page, and today we're going to be drawing a hobbit house. So it's going to be uh, hidden into a natural landscape, tucked away somewhere magical. Uh, grab your drawing supplies. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. The important thing is that you make your mark. Park Street Books is proud to sponsor the Mike Page Doodle Club. Find them locally at 504 Main Street, Medfield, Mass. Open Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or visit parkstreetbooks.com. No matter where you are, that's parkstreetbooks.com. All right, to start our Hobbit house, we are going to make kind of a rainbow shape. That'll help make it kind of seem whimsical and special. Uh, this is going to be kind of the roof area, um, and then we'll have a hill above it. I'll tell you what, you don't have to commit to the shape of your Hobbit house quite yet, but what I am going to do is make a line here for where the ground is, so our door and our window will be within this shape that I have so far. So now that I've got that, I'm going to make a door. I'm going to make mine round. You can make yours however you'd like. Maybe you want it kind of like a pointed gothic castle door. Uh, whatever you do, don't just make a rectangular plain old door uh, because we want this to look kind of uh, fantastic and magical. Uh, for your doorknob, so I've made my wooden door here. Your doorknob could be right in the middle. It could be off to one side. You could have a window in your door or not. Um, I'm going to leave all of that up to you. Um, I think I'm going to have a tall, thin handle over here. But again, however you make yours is fine by me. Uh, then I'm going to put some molding going around it. I just hit a dent in the paper right there. Sometimes if you're not careful, if you're pushing down too hard and there's a dent, you will find it. Um, and unfortunately, the pen likes to take a walk sometimes and go into those dents. It's not my fault, I swear. It's the, the pen likes to walk. Okay, so we've got our molding there. Uh, then for the windows, you can have round windows. Again, sky's the limit, whatever you would like. I'm going to put a round window over here, and maybe I will do a small pointed window over here. I recently did a project for a friend that converted a school bus into basically an RV. So those are called schoolies. Um, and since doing a project for her for the front of that, um, it was a desert scene. Um, but since then, I, I have kind of had in, my, in the back of my head like cool uh, different forms of housing. Um, and this is definitely one. Actually, what's interesting is uh, not that long ago, people were living in houses not too far off from this, um, where you're using the environment um, to help you build your house. Um, so these little hobbit houses tend to have, tend to be built into the hillside, um, which is what Vikings did. Um, not always. They also had like long houses and stuff, but um, plenty of Native American tribes built their homes into the environment. Um, building an actual house is something relatively new, like a freestanding house that is not taking advantage of the space that it's in is a fairly new idea. when you're talking, you know, hundreds of thousands and millions of years and all that, it's pretty new. 
So here's the um, opening for our Hobbit house. Uh, I feel like it needs more going on up in here. So what I might do is put some beams coming out to support this roof. And I might add like a hanging plant or something here. I don't even know where to put a plant, maybe over here. So we'll do kind of a dangly plant that's hanging over the pot. I did this very quickly and scribbly. Um, if you sit here and try to draw actual leaves right here, you might lose your mind. Uh, but if you do it real quick and scribbly, someone else's brain is going to look at that and say, oh neat, a little potted plant. And it's much quicker and easier. And just make sure that you make it so that it is hanging from something. Uh, next, we need, let's see, it's going to need like a fun little chimney. There's a bunch of ways to do this. Uh, I'm actually making a pretty boring chimney right now. It is square. But what you could do is make a Look, maybe we'll make another chimney over here that's like a little stovepipe kind. And we'll have it come up at different angles. And then we'll put pretty much a triangle on top with an oval like that. It's like we started to make the letter A and then we knocked a C on its side. And we got that little cap for the chimney. Um, and then I don't want this to be a nice smooth hill. I want it to be natural grass at the top. So just like the scribbles here, I'm going to do a bunch of uh, scribbled lines sticking up to make the grass there. You could put flowers on top if you want. You can have your hillside however you'd like. Also, I hope you're kind of taking the idea of this and adding in your own stuff. Um, if you see me doing something and you're like, Mike, come on, man, you can do better than that. Um, by all means, please do better. Uh, if you have a cool idea, maybe you want like daisies growing on top or whatever, do it. May, you can absolutely draw your version of this. It does not have to be mine. We can also put stuff out front. And there can be like cool features and whatever on the house. Like sometimes round windows have round masonry stuff going on around it. kind of makes that window look a little bit more interesting. Maybe we make a shadow where this roof is, like this part of the roof there, that little rainbow line, that's going to create a shadow. So now we can come in and add that stuff. I'm gonna jump ahead by doing this part in Sharpie. Um, that way we can knock that out quickly so that you're not sitting there waiting for me to color in a shadow. So this gives the roof a little bit more dimension because now we can see that it's sticking out. Uh, maybe there's a small shelf under this window and another round window over here in the corner. I guess you could also make shutters on your windows. And I'm going to put an extra 
bar going across there just to make it not the same exact thing as this window. Make it a little bit different. There's a um, style of wood carving with cottonwood bark where guys like to make fairy houses and stuff out of cottonwood bark and they get uh, it's almost like the goal is to be as whimsical as you possibly can um, add ridiculous bends to the building staircases where they don't really belong but it's cool because it's it's a great way to stretch your imagination and some of those wood carvers actually like teach themselves really uh, great techniques just by try having to figure out a way to do the thing that they want to do. Uh, so instead of just having a staircase, some of them actually will hollow out behind the staircase. Not an easy thing to do. Um, and so then you are increasing your skills as you're going because you're teaching yourself new tricks, which is always good. So if you have a hard time imagining your own little hobbit house kind of thing like this, you could always do a quick search for cottonwood bark houses. And you can see some ideas that other people have had on really wild structures for homes. I suppose you could even make like a whole village here. You could add another one next to it. This is kind of fun because the, the sky is really the limit here. You could have a pathway towards it. Now, see, I was about to start doing this. We don't want that for a little hobbit house. It needs to look a little more natural. Um, so it can't just be a squared path it should definitely have a bend to it. Um, so instead of just doing this, like it's coming straight towards us, I'm going to have it curve off to the side. Uh, the nice thing with drawing a stone path, there's really no right way to draw a stone path. Someone could say, you know, no mason is going to lay stone like that. Why'd you draw it that way? Well, these weren't put down by a mason. They were put down by someone else. A hobbit, a fairy, a leprechaun, doesn't matter. Who, <laughs> whatever it was, uh, it's not a professional stonemason. There's your answer. The nice thing about drawing something that doesn't necessarily exist is it can be however you'd like to make it. And no one can really tell you that it's wrong because it's your thing. This is definitely the type of thing if you're someone that's not really comfortable with putting yourself out there and being willing to make mistakes and all that. This is probably uh, right in your wheelhouse. You're probably like, yes, there's like, I can't do this wrong. Um, if you're someone that's not super confident in drawing, draw a bunch of these. Um, it'll probably be really fun for you. And again, there's no, there's no right way to draw. Uh, I mean, who, who am I to even say that this is how to draw a Hobbit house? Uh, draw it however you want. It's nice drawing things where there is no right or wrong way. Um, they're just fun uh, subjects to draw. Anytime you've got something that's, that's kind of the fun thing with doodling too, is it's you're just making something that wasn't already there. Uh, and if it's not perfect, it's not perfect. Who cares? I think a lot of times um, people are just afraid to try new things. They're afraid to mess up. Um, I think sometimes it's important to just remember when you were a kid, you didn't care. Like, 
If you hand a kid a box of crayons and a piece of paper, there aren't a whole lot of kids that are afraid to mess up. Um, they are more than willing to pick up those crayons without being told and just start making something. And that's really what we're going for here. Just uh, pick up your stuff and get started. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be something that wasn't there five minutes ago. I think it's really easy, um, as we get older, it's really easy to kind of lose sight of that, that um, not, things don't have to be perfect, they just have to get done. Um, and it's just like anything, the more you practice it, the better you'll get. Um, but if you always just sit there wishing that you did something, you're never gonna, you're never going to improve at it. Um, like I, I really wish I could play piano, but guess what? I don't practice piano, so I'm not good at it. That's the way it goes. If I wanted to be, you know, playing Rachmaninoff and Beethoven, um, I would have to practice. And again, that's something I would love to be able to do, but it's not something that I've um, spent the time on, so I'm not good at it. Uh, and that's okay. Um, but like I always say, it's not necessarily that you're not good at something, you're just not good yet. Um, so if I, if I did want to be able to play all that stuff on piano, you know, if I started practicing nonstop now, instead of drawing and instead of uh, making woodworking projects and all that, if I just played piano, I could probably uh, get good enough to put on a little concert for my friends and whatever. But that's, uh, you know, that's not what I'm doing, so it's not something that I've excelled at. Um, which is fine if you're willing to accept it, you know. Uh, but if, if, whether it's drawing, running track, um, bowling, could be anything. Uh, but if you want to get good at it, you have to you have to put the time in because um, there aren't a whole lot of people out there that can say they just picked something up and oh it was really easy. Um, no matter who you look at, uh, who you look up to, um, they all put in the time to get where they are, where you're looking up to them, um, and that's something that's important to remember because it's easy it's easy to kind of think that some people are just oh they're so gifted. It's not necessarily that a person is gifted, it's that they took the time to give themselves that talent. I don't think I know anybody that's talented at something that didn't work really hard to get there. And I'm just adding a couple little things on top of this house to make it a little more interesting. So it's not just a hill. I've got a little tree up there, and this is going to be a little bush. If you're having fun drawing this, this is the type of thing that begs to be colored. Uh, watercolor, marker, crayons, doesn't matter. Colored pencil, whatever you have, this is something that um, probably shouldn't just stay black and white. Uh, put in a little bit of extra time and color that one in. But this is a problem. I had mentioned we could add another building over here, which I never did, but I need to at least make a horizon line there. We can't just have it floating. Uh, we could also add in some wispy little clouds. I guess that's not a very wispy cloud, that's more of a puffy one, but... Uh, you could add in a couple birds. Oh my gosh, that was not a bird at all. Neither was that. <laughs> uh, of all things to have a hard time with. There we go. That's what I was going for right there. All right. I hope you enjoyed drawing a crazy little hobbit house. Um, this is fun because there's no right or wrong. You're just adding uh, details of how you would want your little hidden away uh, house in a hillside. Um, and it's always nice when there's no correct or incorrect way to do it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed following along. Tune in next time for another episode of the Mike Page Doodle Club. Have a great day.
Park Street Books is proud to sponsor the Mike Page Doodle Club. Park Street Books is an independent children's book and toy store. With nothing electronic in the store, Park Street Books encourages kids to read, play, and unplug. Find them locally at 504 Main Street, Medfield, Mass. Open Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or visit parkstreetbooks.com no matter where you are. That's parkstreetbooks.com.